You ever get over the ball and feel completely uncomfortable? Some days you're uncomfortable with the driver, some days it's the irons, some days it's both. Well, there's things that you have to be doing differently with both in order to be successful with both. So let's go over what we gotta do. So first, let's go over our posture, our stance, our tilt, and our ball position with iron. So posture wise, what we wanna do is get a little bit of flex in the, in the knees here. The knee should be just over the balls of your feet. We don't want them too far over our toes. That's gonna to get our quads burning. That's gonna make us wanna stand up in the backswing and lead to a whole host of issues. We don't wanna have our, our knees too far back because that's gonna get our legs too straight. We're not gonna be able to move athletic, athletically in the swing. So get those knees just over the balls of your feet to be in a good athletic position. Next, what I want you to do is I want you just to relax your arms and your shoulders. Be in a nice, neutral shoulder position. I don't want you to have your shoulders pinned back. I don't want you to be slumped over because if you do that, you're gonna tend to have a hard time turning in the backswing. So in order to move athletically, we wanna be in a nice, neutral, natural, relaxed shoulder and arm kind of position. So just let your arms kind of hang down. So a little bit of flex in the knees, arms hanging down. What I want you to do is push the hips back and move the chest forward and let your arms hang down until your arms are roughly about five or six inches in front of your thighs. From there, that's a good posture to be in with your irons. So next, let's talk about the stance. The stance with an iron, you want to be about the, the middle of your ankles to be just outside your, your shoulders. You can be a little bit narrower or a little bit wider, but I think this is just a good general place to be. It makes it very easy to get to your lead side and be able to hit down and through the ball like we need to do with our irons. If we're too wide, then we may not be able to get to our lead side very well. We may hang back, hit chunks and thins. And if we're too narrow, we may slide forward and slide back. So having that stance to where the middle of the ankles are just outside the shoulder width there is gonna put you in a good position. Next, let's talk about our tilt, and that's our spine tilt, our body tilt at address. We wanna have our, some tilt in order to be able to have our shol shoulders and our hips squared up at address. If we don't have any tilt, I'm gonna to have to reach for my lower hand on the grip, and I'm gonna to tend to open up my shoulders and open up my hip, hips. So I wanna have a little bit of tilt here. So here's an easy way to find your tilt. Put your club, right on your shirt buttons, down through your belly button, on your belt buckle there. And what you're going to do is you're just gonna tilt until that club touches the inside of your leg. That's gonna put you in a good tilted position to allow you to have nice square shoulders, nice square hips, and have your hand, your lower hand, be there comfortably um, on the bottom. It also puts you in a position to be able to go up to the top of the swing and be in a good position at the top and through impact. So you're just setting yourself for, up for success here when you do this. So lastly, we have ball position. So ball position, once you've got your proper tilt here, good ball position with about any iron, and it can move a little bit forward for longer irons, a little bit more back for like a wedge. But generally, if you put, hang the club from your earlobe here, drop it straight down, Pull the, uh, push the club out, that's gonna be a good ball position. That's just slightly forward of the middle of the stance. And that's all there is to it for irons to be nice and comfortable over the ball. So what are the differences for a driver, right? With the iron, we wanna hit down and through the ball. We have to make ball first contact. For the driver, the ball is elevated, right? We get this ball up on a tee, the ball is elevated. We wanna hit up on the ball to be able to launch that ball high with low spin and get lots of distance. So what are the differences there? So if I grab my driver here, as far as posture is concerned, as you can see, this driver is quite a bit longer than this nine iron. It's almost the entire grip length longer. So we're gonna be standing a little bit more upright with the driver because of that. So it's the same kind of thing. Get our knees, right, just over the balls of our feet, and then we're going to tilt down, we're going to start to push our hips back and let our arms hang down. But this time, I want you to go to where your hands are about four inches hanging down because you're gonna be standing a little bit more upright because the club is longer. And then from there, we're going to reach a little bit, right? We're gonna reach out. For the irons, our arms were hanging straight down, right? Five or six inches in front. For the driver, we're a little bit more upright and then we reach just a little bit for the driver. And that's gonna put us in a really, really good position to be able to be successful with the driver. Next, our stance width, right? We talked about how we wanna hit up on, on the driver, right? So we wanna be a little bit wider. That's gonna make it a lot easier to stay behind the ball and be able to hit up on the ball 
be able to get that high launching, low spin. So I like to see the inside of the feet to be on the outside of the shoulder. So with the irons, we had the middle of the ankles here, in, uh, outside, outside the, shoulder, uh, the shoulder width here. Now I want the inside to be there. Now you can be a little bit narrower, you can be a little bit wider, but again, a little bit wider is gonna make it a lot easier to be able to stay behind the ball. We're still transferring our weight to our lead side, but if we have something to brace against, we have this angle to brace against, it's gonna make it a lot easier to stay behind the ball, hit up on it, get that high launch and low spin. So the tilt, you're gonna do the same thing with your tilt. But now, because our stance is a little bit wider, it's actually, if we do this tilt trick, it's actually gonna enable us to get a little bit more tilt, which is what we wanna do with the driver to promote more of an up upward angle of attack. If we're more tilted away, it makes it a lot easier to swing from the inside and get that upward angle of attack on the ball that we wanna have with the driver. So if we do that straight down from the shirt buttons onto the belt buckle here, tilt away, we're gonna have a little bit more tilt there. That's gonna put us in that good position. Lastly, we have ball position. For the driver, or excuse me, for the irons, we were straight down from the ear lobe there with the tilt. For here, what I want you to do is I want you to put the club right outside of your shoulder here when you're in your good stance and your tilt, let it drop straight down and then go straight out to the ball. That's probably a little too far back. That's gonna put me in a good ball position. So now, if I get set up really well with my irons and my driver, I get comfortable with them, I understand what I need to be doing, I need to be hitting down and through with the, with the irons, I wanna be hitting up and get a high launch, low spin with the driver, makes it a lot easier to be comfortable with them. So let's see if I can get, a, get set up correctly here and get a good drive with this proper setup. All right, I will definitely take that one there. All right, so now that we are set up for success with both the driver and the irons, we're gonna be able to make a good backswing. But in the downswing, what we wanna make sure that we're doing is we wanna make sure that we're squaring that club up as soon as possible. Because if we don't, we're gonna to have to make compensations in the downswing to be able to get that face squared up. And usually what that involves when that face is open, when we're coming down, is flipping the club as we come through impact. See, if you flip or release the club early, that's a means of closing the face. And that's what a lot of people I see in my students do in order to square up the face. So what we wanna do is we wanna get that face square earlier in the swing, like we see, like we see John Rahm, Colin Morikawa, Dustin Johnson, like we see all these great ball strikers doing, that allows them to turn through the ball as hard as they possibly can and know that that face is square every single time hitting that ball dead straight. So this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method at Top Speed Golf. And if you'd like to learn this method, Clay Ballard, the founder of Top Speed Golf, is gonna show you a preview of one of our best drills for the anti-roll method. If you wanna stick around and watch that video, you can do so, or if you wanna see the whole entire video, all you have to do is click the iCard that's gonna pop up on your screen, or if you don't see the iCard, no worries, just go ahead and go below the video in the description and click the link there. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,